The last of these uh, tricks I want to show you with calculus is the chain rule. And it's the one that I think is the most important. I use this one the most often. And yet it's also the most complicated looking. So maybe that's why it's worth going into here. Now this, it may sound really weird, but I consider this the inception of calculus. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie Inception, but uh, that was like, you know, a dream within a dream. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but that's sort of what they were talking about. Well, in this case right here, we've got chain rule, and that's a function. So maybe I'll just say uh, when you have, oops here. Um, so when you have a function within a function. See, it's a little bit like Inception. Ooh, we have a function within a function. Example of that could be, you know, something. Well, actually, never mind. Um, I've got an example right here, just below. So here we're going to have a function like two x plus one. That's one function, and it's within a function that's doing something to the power of three. So you can see this as a function within a function. Now the generic way to uh, deal with chain rule is this. Now this notation may look a little bit weird, but it says when you have y equals you know, g of u. So this is you know some function within some other function. And so maybe we better define, so where u is a function of x. So here we have that, you know, this u here, it's actually a function of x. I'm just gonna make my u a little bit nicer here. Well, then we can say that, um, no, we can say that dy dx, so the derivative, is going to be equal to, now, what we have to do is take the dy du. So in other words, here we're going to take the equation of y. Remember, it's a function of u. So we, we take the u derivative of it, so to speak, and then we multiply that by, um, in this case right here, du dx. And you might think, oh, the du's cancel out, so we get dy dx. But in calculus, it's, it's not meaningful to do that. That doesn't mean anything. Now, by the way, this is just times. This is supposed to be an x. So maybe I should uh, delete this times here and actually make it just like a dot, just so you know that it's uh, just being multiplied here. Something like that. So this right here is the form that a lot of people use. So this is for chain rule. Now, the form may look a little bit awkward. So let's take a look at one way to do it. So I'm first going to show you how to actually use this format. So we're going to use that here. And after that, I'm actually going to show you a trick. So just a way that I like to see these things. So let's first of all, well, let's just deal with this first one. So here we have some sort of function here. We've got to figure out what's being a function of what. So here it's like I have a function like y equals, well, something cubed. That's going to be like my u. So it's like it's y equals u cubed. Right? If I just call this inner function, if I just called it u, then it just goes y equals u cubed. And maybe it helps to actually write down what u is. So u is going to be just 2x plus 1. So the way to deal with chain rule then it says, well, the derivative, so dy dx is going to be, well, dy du. In other words, I have to take the derivative of this equation with respect to u. The good news is I only have one variable, so it's okay. Derivative of u cubed would be, well, three u squared. Because again, I still use my polynomial trick, and I've got something to the power of three. So the three comes in front, so three times u to the power of, and three minus one is two. Well, that was pretty easy. And I have to just have to multiply that by du dx. So in this case, the derivative of this. And the derivative of 2x plus 1 is just 2, because this one here goes poof. So just multiply that by 2. Now the only problem is, though, I'm not allowed to leave my u in there. I'm supposed to replace u with what it really is. So see this one right here? I need to take that one and replace it in here. So that means dy dx is going to be 3 times 2x plus 1 squared, all that times 2. Actually, maybe what I can do that's more meaningful, I can say that 3 times 2 is actually just 6. So I can just chuck a 6 in front, and there we go. I'm done. So that's how we can deal with chain rule. The key is, though, considering as a function within a function.
And this just takes some practice. I recommend you know trying it out, especially if you're going to use this uh, this notation right here. It really helps to try out lots of different examples. But the way I like to look at it, I like to look at it a little bit of a different way. I like to say, okay, well, it's like we have an outside function. This is like an outside function. I've got some junk to the power of three. So this is like the outside function. And then I've got my inner function. So this is why I like, you know, this, this inception analogy here. So you have a function within a function. So in this case right here, then, uh, maybe I'll show you another trick then. So for this one right here, you can also say it's like this. So I'm going to give you an alternate version of chain rule. So alternate version. And now this one is not so mathematical, it's more verbal. So basically what I'm just going to do is write out essentially what you do here. So if you have an inside function and an outside function, I'm going to say this then. The derivative is going to be, well, it's the derivative of the outside with, I'm going to say original inside and I'm going to say times uh, derivative of inside. Now what I mean by that, it turns out this is actually going to do the exact same thing as the written out version of chain rule. So this is the sort of verbal version or maybe you know a less mathematical version but essentially does the same thing I have to take the derivative of the outside function but keep the original inside and let's go back here to that past example see if the outside function was u cubed the derivative of something cubed is just going to be two uh, three times something squared so this this represents derivative of the outside but instead of this I put in the original inside so that's why it's three times u squared um, where u is 2x plus 1. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So that's essentially what I was doing there. So me, at least in my head, this is what I have in my head. As soon as I think of chain rule, I actually say this to myself, derivative of outside with original inside times derivative of inside. And actually, I used to force my students to know this and memorize this. So the poor students, I would see them in the hall and I'd be like, quick, chain rule. And they'd have to tell me in the hallway what it was. So I know it's a little bit weird to sort of ambush people and sort of terrorize my students with the chain rule. But just because once they know it really well, then it makes really complicated things like this not so hard at all. Now, if you really didn't like using chain rule, I mean, let's look at this example here. We have f of x equals 5x squared minus x cubed, and all that's to the power of 8. Now you could, if you wanted to, if you're a real sucker for punishment, you could actually expand this binomial. You could use a binomial theorem and actually spend your time, it'll take probably a half hour, and you'll very likely make a mistake, but you could actually expand it. It'll have a ton of terms. And then when you were done that really horrible expansion, then the derivative would be easy. But I want to show you how we don't have to expand it. This is, the, this is the beauty of using this chain rule. We don't have to expand it. We can do it with a function within a function. So my outside function, let's maybe just talk about that there. So I have my outside and I have an inside function. This right here, this is the inside function. Again, for some reason, it looks like I'm drawing hipster mustaches instead of my uh, brackets, but oh well. This is my inside function. And my outside function is some junk to the power of 8. So if I want to do the derivative, it's going to be the derivative of the outside. So I'm just going to leave it as a blank here. I'm going to say you know, some sort of junk to the power of 8. Well, the derivative of something to the power of 8 is going to be 8 times junk to the power of 7. So this is my derivative of the outside. That's what I've just done here. So I had some junk to the power of 8. And again, I just like to write it and leave a big bracket here. So bracket, and I just say, well, 8 times some crap here to the power of 7. There we go. And what do I put in there? So that's why I say with original inside. Well, the original inside is 5x squared minus x cubed. Okay. So that's my first part. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside isn't so hard. 2 times 5 becomes 10, so it's 10x. And we'll just put in brackets here, 10x. And then this here becomes minus uh, 3x squared. Because again, I take my 3, put it in front, 
So I have 3 times x to the power of, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So this right here I could say is my answer here. This could be my derivative. I don't really feel like expanding this one. In fact, I don't think you should. So this could be said to be your derivative. Now, if you don't like to see this little dot here, that's okay. You can actually just glue it right up. You could actually take that and sort of glue these two beside each other. So this one is still multiplying this whole thing. So it's kind of the same thing. But uh, I'll just leave it there for now. So this is how we can deal with chain rule. And I'm going to show you a few other videos uh, that are going to have more examples, just because chain rule, I think, is so, um, so useful and powerful, and yet so many students struggle from it. So I'm going to show you a few more examples.